let's take a minute here to talk about phasers. Phasor notation is a simplified notation that we often use when dealing with linear time invariant, or LTI, systems. The basis of phasor notation begins here, with Euler's formula which says that any complex number z may be expressed either as a sum of a real part and an imaginary part, z equals x plus jy, or as a scaled complex exponential, z equals r times e to the j phi. If we look at the mapping of a number in a complex plane, we can see this clearly. This point z may be considered either as the sum of a horizontal part x and a vertical part y, or as a distance r from the origin and an angle phi from the positive real axis. By the simple geometry of the plot, you can see that the real part x will be equal to r times the cosine of phi, and the imaginary part y will be equal to r times the sine of phi. So when we're dealing with a real quantity such as voltage or current or electric field, and the quantity is sinusoidal or time harmonic, the general form of the equation for that quantity is here where a0 is the amplitude of the wave, omega is its frequency, and theta is a phase offset. We can consider this as the real part of a complex exponential with amplitude a0 and angle equal to the argument of the cosine, omega t plus theta. So by Euler's identity, these two quantities are equal. Now, phasor notation uses this complex notation, but makes two notationally simplifying assumptions. The first is that whatever we're expressing using phasor notation, whether it's voltage or electric field or whatever it is, is a real quantity. Since we know it's real, we don't have to write this every time. The second assumption is that we're dealing with a linear time invariant system. In other words, the frequency isn't changing. The only things that change in an LTI system are amplitude and phase. So we can break off the frequency part of this term and leave it as an implicit factor rather than explicitly writing it out. So if you're given this quantity in the time domain, you can write it like this in phasor notation. It's important to note that even though we aren't explicitly writing the frequency term, e to the j omega, it is still there. So if you take the time derivative of a phasor quantity, you have to bring down a j omega. We'll often use phasor notation when talking about time harmonic electromagnetic waves. In light of this fact, we can revisit Faraday's and Ampere's laws, which have these time derivative terms. If the magnetic field is time harmonic, then its time dependent term is e to the j omega t, and its derivative brings down a j omega. So we can write Faraday's law for sinusoidal signals like this, del cross e equals negative j omega b. Similarly, the time derivative in Ampere's law brings down a j omega, and we can write that del cross h equals j omega d plus j. In a source-free region, this becomes simply del cross h equals j omega d. Notice that there are no longer any time derivatives in these equations. So now, if we're given the electric field in a region, we can solve for the magnetic field using Faraday's law rearranged like this. And similarly, if we're given the magnetic field in a source-free region, we can solve for the electric field using Ampere's law like this.